splinting, it is an external device or uh, like external appliance which we apply around the joints uh, to maintain joint range and function and prevent the contractures means tightness of the uh, 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 tissue or, or shortness of the tissue around the joints. We tend to apply mainly elbow joint and uh, wrist joint and the fingers and hand to maintain the range and function and uh, the, in the limb, in the lower limb, in the leg you tend to use uh, knee joint and ankle joints and that is useful for uh, actually we use knee joint to uh, improve a function like sit to stand and we use knee, 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 knee splint and because they maintain the range and ankle one again useful for sit to stand and walking and when you take upper limb we use splinting mainly to get a functional reach and a grasp like you know if you want to reach some paper or a pen away from you then you know you should have a good reaching and and, and grasp grasp means hold something if these structures are very short and if you can't open obviously you can't hold the object or if these structures are very short or tight then you can't reach so that's why we consider splinting to maintain that the initial stages mainly in a, in, a, in, a, in a neurological conditions they tend to uh, you know a weakness in their limbs or you know joints around the joints so there they are very prone to develop contractures and uh, there we, we we better to think before uh, starting a developing contractures or tightness around the joint it is a uh, quite often i think yeah most of the time you do see a uh, developing contractures in neurological conditions so there that is that's the initial process before yeah when we consider splinting we go and see the patient and explain to them uh, what are the benefits of having splinting uh, and we explain we before considering splinting we do see whether this person is going to can develop or patient going to develop tightness or shortening and there we explain to the patient like you know I can see some changes in your tissue soft tissue maybe tightness here you know getting worse or you know you can see when for example initially stroke patient they tend to have a very flaccid and loose limbs but when when you see next few weeks later it will start maybe developing this type of tightness because opposite muscles are very weak and and then this group of muscles are very tight and there you can see this this is getting more more tight and tight and the, it means the tone is getting worse in the sense the tension in the muscles are getting more and more high in this group of muscles and this group there's no tension and because of weakness and because of neurological problems we can use it uh, preventative measures and either we can use after had a or, or after already they develop contractures, still we can use those splinting to improve uh, that stretch and the range in the joint. Uh, we can use both ways, before and after also. But most of the time, we better to use before already developed contracture, because if it's already there, then it's very, very difficult to get back to the functional range. So yeah, it's, it's more, we, we're trying to look preventative measure. I think clinician, uh, we always should monitor uh, patient whether is any tone is changing tone means again tension in the muscle or changing or getting better or worse or if it's getting worse then before constant splinting we try different other modalities like you know uh, stretches and you know activations to range of movements like you know patient able to do their own or medication uh, or, or postural management like a, a you know maintaining their posture by putting pillows and other things and still, if it doesn't work, then we have to go for splinting. But we go, don't go straight away to the splinting. First, we try all these things, and then if it doesn't work, then we'll go for splinting. When we treat a patient, we should have some goal. Like, we don't just give everything whatever they want or whatever you think. Before, if you give something to the patient, then you should set a goal. Like, oh, by giving this protocol or this treatment, then the patient should get benefit of these 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 things or, or especially me as a rehab centers we do see a functional progression or functional goal uh, rather just uh, uh, physical uh, or uh, or just we don't just skew like the maintenance we tend to see the function in a rehab services like us so here the goal is like a oh the person able to reach this or the person able to wear their his own top or person they're able to comb the hair so all those things like if I 
if I have a good, now me, I can comb my hair in a best manner. If I have a tightness and a stiff hair on my hip, sorry, my wrist joint, then I can't, I struggle to comb. So here I should have some goal, which is a function, which is I'm able to comb my hair by getting a good stretch and range. As a clinician, I go and see the patient because patient they come and you know uh, explain the problems or you know Kiran, I'm able to do this or even I can see myself you know if there is a, for example as I said before if if there is a shortening of muscles here if the patient is struggling to comb or or brushing his teeth then there uh, if I find there's a benefit of having splinting then I go back to my MDT multidisciplinary team is important. Team decision is most important and there I need to present my case in front of team members like you know I want to consider sprinting for this patient to get a benefit like a, a functional benefits for example either combing or brushing his teeth or I need to explain or, or even I should explain to the patient what, is the, what we are aiming for. If the patient or if the patient knows what is the benefit by having splinting they follow our plans better and they'll take it very seriously by having splinting. So even MDT team, we will discuss and decide what benefits by having splinting for that particular patient or whether splint or cast. So most of the time splints are beneficial so there uh, and what type of splint is beneficial for that patient then we discuss all those things and we discuss uh, what is our plan like uh, uh, how to maintain the splinting and how to implement the plan uh, and how the patient uh, should participate in this in this in this plan some splints are just fixed they're like that and some splints are dynamic splints we call dynamic splints means like we can increase the range and the second one is third one is functional splints some splints are very specific uh, like a one splint like we use it tend to use it for foot af4 we call ankle foot orthosis like that splint will help me to uh, put the uh, foot placement in the right place like if for example my foot is dropped like that then I should have a splint which should be able to hold my foot like that flat and then I it's better for enhance my walking uh, and if, if I don't have a splint my foot is dropped like that and I struggle to lift my leg up and uh, put the, my foot in the right place and, uh, and uh, the second one is we use a splint which is uh, for upper limb and hand which enhance uh, reaching and grasp objects or you know things uh, if you want to have a glass of water then that will enhance reaching and grasp. A rehabilitation assistance role is the most important in a rehab services even not only rehab services even at home or even community in hospital wherever you go because they are the one spending with the patient 24 hours. As a clinician I can spend just maybe half an hour or an hour but the next 23 hours rehab, rehabilitation assistants uh, uh, see the patient and they are the one uh, uh, you know make sure you know they sometimes the patient they can't apply their own splints so obviously rehabilitation assistants they're trying to assist or help the patient to apply those splints if rehab, rehabilitation assistants if they see any changes when before or after applying splint for example redness or or, or any pain or any discomfort or some patients they can't communicate you know some patients like you know minimally conscious or or very you know very minimal or communication problems or expressive problems so there the rehabilitation assistants role is the most important they are the one acting behalf of patient so there they need to check all those things and if everything is their role is mainly follow the plan what you know as a clinicians we do make a plan and then they need to follow that plan and they need to document everything in their notes, daily notes. That is the most important. If you find any changes in the skin or patient, if, say, if they say that, oh, this is not painful or it's not working or even if you see that it's not working or if you're really struggling to follow the plan or anything like that, please come back to the clinician or, or stop. If you find any redness or any, 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 any skin damage or anything, stop using splints straight away and then take it back to your clinician and explain to them what's happening or if, if they are struggling to follow the plan or if the patient refuses to use it so make sure you need to communicate with your clinician and there they will decide what, we, what they can do best next. Here we do use some outcome measures for example uh, if you use a splint for elbow so here whether I'm able to improve range 
so that's the range of movement either whether it's improved or is the same or is get worse so i need to check our uh, range of movement assessment we use and we use a gas goals gas goals is a goal attainment scale which we do right or oh, what is our goal now and what we are aiming for next six weeks or 12 weeks or or, or next to, um, three weeks or it depends so we write a goal what is the current status and what is the aiming for in my experience i have used a one el elbow splint uh, to improve a range and function uh, one of our stroke patient he developed tightness and contractures in, in elbow joint in this group so there the patient is really struggling to reach something and there uh, is very tight and it is limited his functional abilities and he lost his independence and there uh, I have used a splint uh, along with my handling physiotherapy uh, hands-on treatment plus splinting to maintain and improve the range and function and after a few uh, weeks later and months later that same patient is able to do his functional independence in, in rehab and at home and is, is taking uh, he's not taking any more help from his family and that's a great independence in that particular patient and he was so pleased and he's able to brush his teeth and he's able to put his his own top and he's able to make a cup of tea and these things you know even these are very important for the you know ADLs activities of daily living the patient able to reach his back and you know his eye can able to you know have a shower properly with his hand participation the conclusion is here uh, the splinting will have a positive effect on a uh, neurological rehabilitation conditions of patients basically we should have uh, some clear goals and uh, patients should participate with our plan or using splinting and uh, documentation the most important and make sure you know we need to write everything what you know the patient whether is 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 engaging or whether we are following the plan and then uh, and next is uh, sees any outcome we, we achieved out of it.